body bags were whore lies. Hey, this is Steven from Shock Stream Productions, and welcome back to Body Bags. Um, just to clarify a bit, I'm the Saturday host. Um, luckily to have my computer back finally. Uh, big thanks to Jeremy, aka Ennis, Ruler22. Um, he's been doing the fill-ins for me ever since the beginning, pretty much, because that's when all the technical jargon began. So, uh, big shout out to Jeremy. Um, so yeah, let's just get into it. Um, this week in particular is Slasher Week, and what better week to get into back into body bags than this week? Um, you won't see me wearing sunglasses really in these videos, mainly because I got a recent injury. And I'm forced to wear sunglasses when on the computer for some amount of time. But this is Slasher Week, so I decided to go with one of my favorite retro slashers. And that's going to be Tim Ritter's classic 1987 film, Killing Spree. Now, like I said, this is 1987. This was made for the home video market. It wasn't shot on video. It was actually shot on 16mm film. Um, but it just worked so well with this. Um, it stars... Festus Feld, who also starred in one of um, Tim Ritter's other films, Truth the Dare, Criminally Insane, A Criminal Madness, excuse me, um, played the one guy at the end who got his head blown off by a grenade, um, so I'll give you a little rundown on the back, uh, meet Tom Russo, creepy looking and eccentric, there's something not quite right about him, dangerous even, when Tom suddenly convinces himself that his wife, Lisa, is sleeping around, it pushes him over the edge into full-blown delusional madness. All two real images of Lisa having sex with other men play in Tom's diseased and tortured mind as he hunts down and sadistically murders each one of the suspected, each one suspected of nailing her. Knives, chainsaws, and lawnmowers leave a trail of smeared heads and splattered entrails in his grisly wake. And no one is safe from Psycho's killing spree. Um, now, in my own review, basically you have this guy who marries this new girl, kind of young for his age. Um, and he had a bad relationship before his ex-wife cheated on him. And now he married this new girl named Lisa. And he's hoping to pretty much have a new start at life and pretty much go on with a new happy marriage. But things start going weird gets cut off from his job, not fired, but he's getting like a lot of money taken off, so his wife wants to um, start working, but he's strict as hell about that, he does not want her to work at all, because he's afraid that she's gonna get knocked off with another guy, and that's his main priority, every time she mentions her wanting to work, there's a little glaring, every time she mentions wanting to do work, he flips out and in total anger, is like, no, I don't want you working, I want you home. And she pretty much does that behind her, well, you find out later what really happens, but basically then, Tom finds this diary in um, Lisa's room, and it's pretty much erotic stories of her having sex with all these different people, like the, the lawnmower guy, um, who else, the electrician, the TV repairman, and he pretty much goes absolutely berserk and decides to go kill these people off one by one. He gets so delusional in this movie that he even goes to a random beach and just starts beating up these random people's people, excuse me, and almost drowns one to death. It's really weird the way you see it, but the character portrays um, just the sadistic, delusional psychopath so well. It so works for this movie. It's just fantastic. Um, so he pretty much does that one by one, covering up what he's really doing. Um, and the one thing I love about this is you have this weird uh, old lady, like his next door neighbor named Mrs. Palmer, who pretty much is snooping around every time. If you've ever seen Bad Ronald and know Mrs. Schumacher, it's pretty much like that. Um, the music in this movie is fantastic. The opening music is really, really well done, well put together, and even scared me a little bit for the first time. The synth works so well on this. Um, it works for 
it's pretty much split between hardcore, not hardcore, but like real 80s synth music, and it also shares some cartoonish music in there, especially with the scenes where Mrs. Palmer is snooping around. It's almost like in the cartoons where it would have foot, like tiptoes playing. It was very similar to that, and I really did like it. The scenes where it would be showing Lisa having her way with these uh, random people were done fantastic and resembled the 80s and 70s erotica or porno, as many would call it. Um, the ending of this film was fantastic. Very twist ending. You'll know when it's a twist at, um, not exactly the end, but close to the end, you'll realize it's a twist. And I'm not going to give it away because it works so well with this movie. The gore, we haven't gotten started with it. The gore in this movie is absolutely fantastic. It, the gore, I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10 on this. It works so well, the splattering, the intestines, everything about the gore in this movie works so well. Mainly because this is one of those independent films of the time where the director, Tim Ritter, actually did have some amount of money to go film this with. Even with his previous movies, he had large-scale explosions. So this wasn't just like a uh, John, Poloni or John McBride or a Poloni Brothers production where it would be money, uh, a film made under $500. This went into the upper thousands and was definitely... You know, you really don't need that much money to make a successful movie, but the money they had did a lot for this movie. It was fantastic. Um, if I have to give it a scale on one on zero to ten, fuck, I'll give this movie a nine, a nine out of ten by far. It just was so well. It's such a fun watch. It was released by Cam Motion Pictures under their classic retro eighties horror collection, and the DVD is fantastic. There's another DVD out. But I'm not sure who who owns the rights to that. But um, I'd recommend Cam Motion Pictures by far just because of the features they have on this. Uh, you get the feature on this, the commentary with Tim Ritter and his best is felt, Joe Winkoop and um, R. M. Hoops. I'm hoping I'm saying his name right, but Joe Winkoop. She's also in this. And amazing. I absolutely love Joe Winkoop. Um, and then you also get Blinded by the Blood documentary, which is pretty much a documentary in the work of Tim Ritter, uh, The Killing Spree Investor Reel from 1986, and Killing Spree Video Test Shoot from 1987. So you obviously know that Cam Motion Pictures is just like me. Just these movies. You know me from my other channel, you know I talk a lot about stuff released by Camp and Alternative Cinema. But this is one I highly recommend, especially for any classic 80s independent slasher film, one to pick up by far, and the DVD is not that expensive to get, it's probably really under $10, I would say, but I felt this would be an awesome addition for Slasher Week, I know Mood 616, the Sunday host, absolutely loves it, we talked about it on uh, the Burial Grounds on one part during uh, 1987, and just an amazing film, I'm speaking about it. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed Slat Saturday's review for Slasher Week, Tim Ritter's Killing Spree. Um, just to let you guys know, I am back, finally. Um, and if you want to find more about me, you can obviously visit me on my YouTube at youtube.com backslash shockextreme1. That is for my company, Shock Extreme Productions. You can also visit me on Facebook at two places, facebook.com backslash Stephen Ferrandino or facebook.com backslash shockextreme Productions. Links will be in the descriptions below. Um, if you have any questions, or feel free to uh, comment below or inbox me, whatever. Um, but that was my review. Hope to see you guys next week. And as always, see y'all later.